Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the Pixellab.net. This is Jordan Condell. Today I'm going to talk to you about something that is absolutely infuriating if you're trying to figure it out for the first time. I remember trying to get this sorted out for the first time and it's just very frustrating because there's a lot of little things you need to know and if you don't know them, absolutely nothing happens. So I'm going to show you a very quick way to bring depth of field pass into After Effects and do your depth of field there because uh, doing it in Cinema 40, it bakes it into your render and you can't modify it and it's kind of difficult to play with. Um, so I usually try to set up uh, depth passes and do everything in After Effects. So um, let me just go ahead and show you what's probably gonna happen to you uh, the first time. So I have a camera in my scene and this is just a default camera. I haven't changed anything yet. And uh, so the depth pass is in your render settings. And let's go ahead and delete it so I can show you where it is. Um, what you're gonna do is go to your multi-pass and then all the way at the bottom is depth pass. Now, if you haven't done this before, you'll think that this is all you need to do. Check on your multi-pass and save it out and uh, go ahead and hit render. So I'm gonna show you exactly what this is gonna do. All right, so our render is done. Let's go ahead and jump into After Effects and let's import these files and see what they look like. All right, so we have two files here. Here's our uh, main render and then we have our depth pass. And the first thing you're going to notice is that it's completely white. Let's go ahead and bring these guys in here and put them in a new composition. Okay. And uh, this depth of field pass is exactly what I was talking about being very frustrating because you'd think you could just check on that multi-pass for depth and uh, you'd be able to somehow use this in After Effects. But a depth pass has to be a black to white representation of your scene. And right now it's only in white, so it's going to do you absolutely no good. So the way that you need to set up your scene is actually in the camera, not the scene render settings. Um, you have to have that multi-pass set up with your depth pass, but then you also have to go into your camera and do some work. Um, there's two things that you need to do. And uh, to visualize what's going on, I usually go to the top view. And then you can see the outline of your camera and uh, kind of its focal point and direction and then your scene, which is uh, right here. So the first thing that we're gonna need to do is specify a target distance. And uh, where we're gonna do that is in the um, object tab. And if we go ahead and go down a bit, we're gonna see our focus distance. And uh, what we can do is drag this focus distance and because we're in the top view, we can see exactly how far it's gonna go back. So what I usually do is pick a focus distance that is past the last object in my scene, right? Because we don't want it somewhere in the middle of the scene. We want it past uh, the last possible thing in our scene. So if we go ahead and zoom in, this last briefcase is the last thing in our scene, so we'll just put it somewhere like that. It doesn't have to be precise, but uh, that will give you kind of the back end of your depth pass. And then the other thing that we need to go is go into uh, the details tab, and then we have these depth of field um, checkboxes. So we have one for depth map front blur and one for rear blur. Now, uh, when I was just starting to figure this out, I thought you would have to check both of these on and kind of figure it out. But actually the rear blur, that's kind of what this target distance is. And the front blur is the front part of our scene. So we don't actually even need this rear blur for what we're doing. All we need is this front blur. And if we go ahead and drag this, you can see this little dot here. That's exactly where the front blur is for this scene. And if we go even farther, you can see that there's a representation by a kind of green rectangle on the camera, right? So what we want this one to do is be in the foreground of our scene. So before even the first object in our scene. So we want it to be kind of very uh, close to the front of the lens, right? So now we have specified our depth pass, the beginning of it and the end of it. And there should be a nice linear ramp from uh, from black to white on our depth pass. So now that we've set up those two things, depth of field, map, front blur, and then in the object tab, our focus distance, now all we have to do is render again and we should have something that will be usable. All right, so let's go ahead and re-import these in After Effects. Go ahead and bring these guys in here and we'll make another composition with these two, okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at our depth pass now and now we're talking. So this is something that we can actually use in After Effects. Uh, so we have our black in the background where we set up our target distance and then it goes all the way to white in the foreground. 
So let's go ahead and turn this off. We just need it for reference. And uh, I'm going to show you two ways that you can use this depth pass. Uh, one is a plugin that you have to pay money for, and the other one is just using After Effects in the built-in stuff. So let's go ahead and start with the built-in After Effects, uh, kind of the free way of doing it. And that is under Blur and Sharpen, and then go to Camera Lens Blur. And if we go to Camera Lens Blur, we can specify what layer we want to use as the depth pass. So let's go ahead and click on that one. And now you can see that we're starting to be able to uh, kind of blur out part of it. And uh, first of all, we need to repeat the edge pixels so we don't get this black fringe, so we'll check that. And then all we have to do is uh, change our blur focal distance. And if we kind of cycle through this, you can see that we're able to specify what's in focus uh, based on that black and white map, right? So we can actually rack focus uh, by keyframing this. Now the problem with the camera lens blur is it does look a, uh, a little bit fake, not quite as good. You can see this sort of milky fringe. Um, if we turn that down and use this a little bit more of a subtle effect, it definitely does do a nice job, but it is not as good as uh, the plugin that I'm gonna show you now. So that is the free way. If you can't afford the plugin, this is kind of a, a hack, uh, but I don't think it looks nearly as good. So if you can't afford it, I would definitely purchase uh, it's called Frisch Luft, um, Frisch Luft Depth of Field. So go ahead and click on that one. And just like before, we can show the, uh, the depth layer and we'll go ahead and specify the depth pass. And uh, we're gonna bring up the radius of our blur. And uh, now we're gonna start to get out of focus, right? Now the cool thing about this plugin is we can actually select our depth by just clicking where we want to be in focus. So let's uh, click here and then all of a sudden that part is in focus which is really really cool. And you can see that the uh, the blurriness actually looks a lot more realistic too if you look here. Uh, that's actually very realistic. And the cool thing is we can actually go into the iris and uh, let's change our show mode to iris and we can actually change the iris. So let's go ahead and take our rounded facets and turn that down and we can change the look of the iris. So something like that might be cool. And then we can go back to our normal blur and now our blur is gonna look a little bit different. So there's a lot of control that we have in here. Um, another thing we can do is specify kind of highlighted areas. So if we go to highlight selection and let's see here, let's enable it. And now it's going to show us what our highlight section is. So just this little bit is right now. But if we go to our lightness and kind of play around with this, these are going to be highlights for the blur. So then what we can do is go back to our normal blur. And we have a section here called highlight intensity, and we can bring that up. So it's kind of hard to see right now, but you're starting to get some kind of uh, different shapes in the blur based on uh, what your iris setting is. So this is Frisch Luft uh, Depth of Field and uh, I would definitely uh, consider purchasing this. I think it's uh, 150 bucks or 180 something like that. Um, but it has a very very nice uh, effect on there. And then we can just play with what's in focus and what's not in After Effects where it's all instant update. It's not baked into our render and uh, I find that you can get very good results and uh, it just saves you a ton of time. Make sure this is in your workflow and that you know how to do this. Um, it's just really changing a couple settings in your camera and it's very, very easy to set up. So make sure to implement this on your next project. Start getting used to this workflow because it'll save you tons of time. So I hope that's helpful, guys. I hope that you learned something. Thanks for checking out the site and we'll see you next time. Bye.